Okay, today we're going to talk about the low-cost build for the force field post based on the one in Forbidden Planet. Main differences on this uh, one here, of course, would be that the pipe has an outside diameter of four and a half inches, whereas the studio screen used one had an outside diameter of four. But I'm just using a black uh, ABS pipe, plastic pipe. When you buy four inch black ABS pipe, it's got an outside diameter of four and a half, so just a half an inch thicker than it should be. And instead of uh, making a proper sequencer, four stage sequencer, I just put in some uh, low cost Christmas lights that have uh, eight different <coughs> sequencing effects. So you can get all kinds of different sequencing effects for about 10 bucks. Of course, the proper way again to do it would be to put in some lamps in there and build a proper sequencer to uh, run all that. Let's take a look at um, take a look at some of the stuff here on screen, and then we can come back to it, and I can run you through the eight different uh, settings that the lights that I used have. You gotta zoom you around here to being in the computer room here. closer so those are these are the low-cost lights that I found at a Walmart if you just want to get them for in the, the ten dollar range and the reasons I picked this particular one is the light doesn't just uh, out of the LEDs isn't just forward it's got a 360 so it shoots off to the side and they're extra bright plus they were white uh, and the fact that it had uh, eight different functions, I was hoping maybe one of the functions might look good in the post. So those are all the reasons that I picked these. And I couldn't find any place, even online, that sold uh, this sort of light setup with these, these qualities for that kind of money. So Walmart it was. When you open up the box, this is basically what you're going to see. Is you have the control unit, and they have the lights into two big bundles. So the first thing I needed to do was to separate um, the lights. They're actually only just running a, a three sequencer step, and uh, which means I repeat one of my steps for the four fins. But uh, the easiest way to separate them all would <clears throat> be to make some marks where the wires leave the controller. Like on one of the lines, I'll uh, do a hashtag one, and another line, I'll take my felt marker and make two marks, the next one will make three, and do that on both ends, and just cut the wires. That way you can start untwisting them all and get them into your separate runs. Next thing I did to, to make sure I wouldn't get confused later was on each one of the, the lamps in a run. For example, I make this line run, I'd make one hash slice on every single one of the plastic lights. So I know that's step one. Then two on the next one, so that's step two. And three on the next one, so it's step three. That'll come in handy later when you want uh, all the fins on both sides to light up the same. And the base, the cone that fits in the bottom of it, again, this is sized for the black ABS plastic pipe, which they sell as four inch pipe, and it has an outside di diameter of four and a half. If you have a large scale printer, you can print that whole cone as one piece, which is what I did on my uh, CR10 S5. But if you don't, um, I'll put the file up on Thingiverse as well that it's split. And you should be able to angle that and fit it onto uh, like a Persia MK3 IS. You know, it'll fit on there. So there's the cone, and here's the uh, top ring part. It's actually upside down, those would face up. The taper. Here's a bottom view. I left it hollow. Uh, you could go back and mod it and put a solid base in there if you wanted. But I wanted to use the least amount of plastic possible. Here are a couple of different uh, fins. Basically, um, on the one that you just saw the video of, the uh, bottom six side fins, because uh, it'd be eight, four on each side, the bottom six on each side I printed in uh, PolySmooth just to see how that would work. And then I didn't have enough PolySmooth to do the two top ones, so the two top ones I did in PLA. They all look about the same. The PLA ones actually look a little bit better. 
and uh, I present this file in two methods. This is the non-mount file, so it just has that rectangular base, so when you cut into that uh, plastic pipe, you can just glue and insert them, or if you want the look of the original unit, I put a file up there that has the, uh, the mounting frame, and actually now that I've done it that way, I would recommend doing it this way, because it's going to be easier to uh, put the LEDs, the lights in, and if one of them ever goes bad, change it. In my case, everything is glued together. You know, the way those LED strings are made that we just looked at a second ago, each one of the strings, if one LED in that string goes out, that whole string goes out. It's like in the old days. That's the way Christmas lights used to be back in the 60s and the 70s. And I did uh, the version that mounts without the frame. I had uh, holes that would match the size of the LEDs that were from Walmart. But I basically brought them all up and just hot glued them, them into the holes to hold them in place. So here's the black ABS pipe. If you take some uh, a three quarter inch wide masking tape, in this case I had blue, but if you had you know regular white that's fine and run that strip all the way down one side you'll already have the right width if you're uh, you know for the for the mounting of the fin. In my case I was doing like I said the non-frame version where my fin's actually going to go in and then I glued it in place. Then all you have to do is mark you know the tops and the bottoms, drill four pilot holes and get out the old saber saw and start start hacking away at that plastic till you get your uh, and here's the other side. You can see the blue tape is just laid all the way across there. Here is uh, the post standing up with the notches. I notched for the top one too so that I could bring that top piece all the way down. And here is the cone and the top piece glued in place. Um, I have a picture of the dimensions here of where you're going to make these cuts at. And that's coming up. And this is me uh, feeding the lights and showing you how not to do it. Uh, I'd built the whole thing and then decided I'd, I'd bring the lights for one, all the number one lights in, and feed them, and then do that again. One appears up at the very top. Remember, everything's upside down in this picture. And you know what would have been a lot easier if I'd just taken all of the lamps, all the wires, crammed them all the way through, flipped the post up right again and then since I'd marked each lead brought out however many I wanted to put into each fin of the number ones here the number twos here the number threes here and then repeat the number ones here it'd been so much easier to have them all hanging out and then you know hook them into the uh, clear fin parts the problem with doing it this way where I fed all the number ones in then fed all the number twos in is because of the way the wires are and the little leads hanging out you just start trying to pull those wires through there and they just keep hanging up on each other and you end up with a big uh, rat's nest so it was kind of a pain to, to do this way so I'm just saying it'd be easier to drop the lights all the way through and then work your way up okay I think somewhere here we go if that'll uh, show up if that doesn't show up as well as the page. I have the page as well if that'll help. But basically it's going to show you when you're measuring from the top down where the top of the fin is and where the bottom of the, the fin hole is going to be isn't as important because you can just stick your fin that you've 3D printed up there and, and go that way. Now if you want the clear look here, let's zoom back out again. Here is one of the plexiglass fins off the studio used one. So you can see they took three quarter inch plexiglass. You cut the shape. You take a router with a 45 and you route. And you end up with these nice curves here. Then you have to separately make this picture frame, which you glue on using weld on number three in a syringe. And then this sat into the metal pipe that the original one is. The original one was 4 inch tubing, 16 inch wall steel, and then held on with screws top and bottom. And then on the inside of the prop they had this 350 watt projection bulb, one behind 
each one sitting on a rack rail. If you watch the first video, you'll see how all of that was done. But my point was, if you 3D print them, they're not going to be clear. They're going to come out like this, which means they light up nicely, but they just don't, they don't have that look, you know. So you could, if you don't want to work with, uh, if you don't have all the tools to work with three quarter inch plexiglass, you'd have to be able to cut it, you'd have to be able to route it, you'd have to be able to drill it, you have to be able to glue it, you have to be able to flame polish it. If you can do all those things, this is the way to go. If you can't, then 3D print the file and you could always sand and fill and paint this and then use this as a master, make a silicon rubber mold of it. You could cast them in clear resin. It's going to cost you more money to cast them in clear resin than it would be to just to buy three quarter inch plexi, but it's also going to be less work if you're turning out a whole bunch of them because all your work would be in making the mold, you know, for one, and then you just multiple casts from that. Okay, what else? I think. Oh, I also tried one in just white PLA. And of course, it lights up fine, but. You know, it's getting even further from from the original look, but I just wanted to see how it would look. So I think we've covered everything here. All the other dimensions are on my first video on this topic, which I'll put a link to <clears throat> down below. And here we have the post. I'm going to walk over there and poke through some of the button settings so you can see what some of the other um, settings that come with it. They have had eight different settings. So here's a, a slow sequence mode. And this is a kind of a fade in, fade out one where this one's fading in, then that one's fading out, then it moves to the next one. Kind of boring. And here's kind of a random sequence. It's kind of cool. It's kind of crazy. You could leave it in this mode and it'd be like you, something's attacking the post. This is an all on. If you just want them to be all on, you've got that. Actually, this is, I'm not, haven't made it the all on. This is the fade in, fade out all on. There's one all on where they all stay on. Then there's kind of a random shimmer, which I think must be this mode. That must be the uh, all on where they just stay on all the time. So this would be the, the first setting on power up, and I believe it just goes through uh, goes through some of the settings like one after another. It just sits there for a while on one and then moves to the next one. So I don't know for you know for ten bucks, almost eleven with tax. It's kind of hard to get lighting effects like that for less money. But if money isn't an issue, you can uh, certainly program a simple light sequencer with an uh, Arduino or a Pololu, Pololu Mini Maestro would be real easy. Or if you're into old stuff and like to code, get a PIC chip, you know. Or if you're really old like me, just get a 4017 decade counter and a 555 timer and set the thing to reset on count five and you've got a four stage sequencer that you could drive uh, solid state relays with or a MOSFET, whatever you want light up uh, anything you want to light up. So, I think between this video and the first video that pretty much should cover everything. I can't think of anything else we want to talk about. It's inexpensive. Uh, the pipe was like 10, 12 bucks for four feet of the four inch black plastic pipe. You've got your uh, you're gonna need a roll of clear filament if you're gonna 3D print them all and maybe some other filament to do the cone in the top part, although I think you could just do them all in clear and paint them. So you got the price of a roll of filament, you got the price of the pipe, you've got the lighting, it's going to be a little bit of glue involved, but uh, all in all it's it's a low cost project and could add something if you have a sci-fi room or a robot room or a props room, you could add some nice effect uh, to the space.